Hey everybody! Uh, so recently we've been given access to some new features within the Google Meet video conferencing system. Uh, so I wanted to make a second video to the one I made a couple of months ago. So the first thing I wanted to go over is the creation of a meeting. Um, so you do want to open your Gmail and then navigate to your Google Calendar. You click on the waffle icon up here and then you can just click on Calendar. Mine's already open, so I'm just going to navigate back to that. So once the calendar's open, you want to click on Create, the little icon on the upper left here. Now, the best thing to do, um, give you the most options, you click on the More Options button at the bottom first. Um, this will open this window. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is give you a meeting a title. I'm just going to call it Google Meet Demo. And then below that's going to default to the date it's today, and it might do like a 30 minute, um, 10 to 30 minute um, bump time forward. Um, but if you do need to change your time, just click on the time from and to, default to an hour if you want longer or shorter, um, that's up to you. Um, in, this case, in this case, I'm just going to click all day, why not? Um, Below that, it's going to give you the option to add Google Meet video conferencing. I'm going to click that. And then on the right side here, you can add your guests. Um, Google does let you do up to 250 people right now while the coronavirus is going on. I'm actually going to add two of Kathleen's emails just so you can see kind of what it's like having multiple people in there. So one thing you want to do in advance, if you are the person scheduling the meeting after you've clicked on that more options button, at the very bottom here, you can add a description. If there's anything specific you want people to know, make sure you make sure your mics are muted when they come into the meeting, anything like that, that's a good place to put it. And the nice thing, things here, that little paper clip right here, if you hover over it, it says add attachment. This will let you attach any sort of document, Google Drive file ahead of time that you might want people to have access to. So you can, up here at the top, you can have the option to go from your drive or you can upload it directly from your computer. I'll, I'll add, add the most recent file on my downloads. Um, I certainly won't show up here. So then I can click upload, it's gonna take it from my computer and put it into the meeting. Okay. So once I've decided on my participants, um, make sure to check the uh, add Google Meet option. I've got my date and my time set up. I can go ahead and click save. Now it's gonna prompt you to send an invite to the meeting or don't send an invite to the meeting. Um, I would recommend sending the invite uh, just so they know about the meeting. Otherwise it just gets added to the calendar and they may not see it. And send that. If there is anyone outside of YDI or not, not with a YDI email address, it's going to ask you if it's okay to invite external guests. As long as you know the people, that should be fine. Um, here you can change if they, you just want those people to view, comment, or edit that document. Um, edit's going to give them the most ability within that meeting. Um, so if you do know the people, uh, and you trust them, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, um, just select that to view. Again, same with those permissions. Great. So now this meeting shows up in your calendar. So from here, we're going to go about joining a meeting. Um, so you want to navigate back to your calendar, um, opening your email, click on the waffle, and then selecting Google Calendar. And I'm going to click on the meeting itself. And then I'm going to click Join with Google Meet. And that's going to take me to this lobby. All right. Um, so this isn't the actual meeting. This is just a lobby to kind of help get yourself set up. Um, so at the bottom here, I have my microphone. I can turn that off or on. Um, if it's off, it's going to be red. If it's on, it's going to be kind of transparent. Uh, same with video. I can turn my video off and on. Um, it'll be red if it's off and transparent if it's on. One option you do have, you can join and use a phone for audio. Um, so basically that's going to use your cell phone signal to call into the meeting. Um, I would try to avoid 
doing that. Um, sometimes cell phone connections are a little unreliable. So if you have the option to use some sort of internet-based system, uh, like a computer, laptop, iPad, I would try to do that um, first. Um, use this as a last resort. Once I'm all set up, I can see who's already in the meeting here. I'm going to click Join Now. So right now there's two people in the meeting. Um, we have our giraffe here, and then we have Kathleen over here. So the first thing I wanted to go over is the presenting. Um, so whoever is running the meeting or has information to share, um, they might want to present their screen. So to do that, you can hit the present now button down here. I'm going to have Kathleen do that so we can see. All right. So once you click on that, we're going to be able to see whatever is on her screen. So everything that she does on her computer is going to show up on mine. Now, if you're on a smaller screen, you might want to change your layout a bit so you can see more. And down here in the bottom right, you have these three vertical dots. That's your more options section. And once you click on that, this is going to open. You have all these extra options. And what we're going to focus on right now is change layout. So it defaults to the presenter in the center here. And then on the right, these darker rectangles, these represent who else is in the meeting. So you have little preview windows and that shows up right here. If you want that to go away, you can click on Spotlight. So again, if you're on a smaller screen and you need to see more of what's being presented, go that route um, and your the, the presenter window will be expanded. I'm going to go back and change the layout again. And then I'm going to click on Sidebar. Um, very rarely, if you do want to see little previews of everyone that's in, in the meeting, you can click on this tiled option and the large presenter view will go away and you'll just see previews of everyone else that's in the meeting. Um, so I'm going to go back to the default sidebar. I think Kathleen can hang up now. Okay, I think she's going to leave the giraffe up so we can see. Next the few things I wanted to go over is little, little functions within the system that's going to help you. So I know one of the things, one of the issues that comes up in a lot of these systems is people leaving their microphones on. And luckily right now, our, our giraffe is muted. But what you can do, if someone is leaving their mic on, you can mute their mic for them. So over, you can click on the people tab to see who's in the meeting. Um, if you have multiple people within the meeting, um, they'll show up here. You can click on their microphone for them. So if you hover over the small window that shows up, um, their microphone symbol will appear. You can click on that and mute them for them. And you can do the same thing for removing them from the meeting. There'll be a little minus sign and you can remove them from the meeting that way. Um, if they're being obnoxious or if they don't belong in the meeting, um, you can just remove them. Uh, another kind of common scenario is someone's presenting and you don't want to interrupt that presentation. You can navigate up here to what looks like a little chat bubble. You can click on that and it will open a chat window. So here people can kind of ask questions to the presenter, they can talk back and forth without interrupting the meeting. So I can just type and then it shows up here. Um, then if you need to close it, I can just click on that X and it goes away. So the next thing I wanted to go over, and this is an extension of what I showed earlier about adding attachments to the meeting. If you do navigate to the bottom here, uh, the meeting title shows up. I can click on that up arrow and it will open another little preview window. On the right side here, I have attachments. Um, and anything that I attached while the meeting, or the, sorry, excuse me, whatever was attached when the presenter was setting up the meeting will show up here. And I can click on that, I can download it. Uh, if it's a Google Drive, it might direct me to their Google Drive. Um, so if there's a presenter presenting information, you want your own copy, that, that is an option. You can also um, email it some in a separate email. This is just kind of nice. So if anyone joins the meeting late, um, they still have access to the, the information. So the newest option, um, we can now record meetings, uh, which is great. So if you're doing a training or something of that nature, um, you can record it so people in the meeting have something to refer back to later. If someone missed the meeting, they have access to it. Um, and then you just have something you can send out later 
if you want. Um, so I'm going to navigate back to my more options. I'm going to click on that. And then at the very top here, it says record meeting. Um, so this is going to be sent out to the meeting when anyone clicks that. Um, it's important that I mention anyone can start the recording. Um, it is going to ask for everyone's consent. Um, so you want to click accept. Recording will start soon. A little record icon shows up there. Uh, now, it's really important for you to mention that the recording, while anyone can start the recording, whoever set up the meeting, that recording will be saved to their Google Drive. Um, and it's important to know that because if, if they don't know that and they go into their drive later and they see some random video file, they might delete it. And then once that's deleted, everyone loses access to it. So it is important to know that the scheduler of the meeting is where the recording gets saved to. So when you're done recording, you want to reverse the step that you did to start the recording. So when I click on those three dots down here, go up and then hit stop recording. And then say stop recording. So once this recording is done, um, two things are going to happen. One, it's going to email a copy of that recording to everyone that was in the meeting, and it's also going to be saved here um, in the calendar. So when, if you go back later and you click on that meeting, it will show up down here. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time because the video has to process, um, but that's where it is, and you'll also have it in the email. So just a few other things. You still have those same functions you did um, in that lobby. So you can turn off your microphone here. Um, this will hang up the meeting. And then this will start and stop your video. So just a, just a couple other things before I stop. Um, the system does work best if you use Google Chrome. Um, and I'll put a link to that browser in the description. If you don't have that, um, I recommend downloading it and installing it. And then the last one, there's going to be a cheat sheet in the link description below. It looks kind of like this. Um, and use that if you want to download that, save it onto your phone, uh, take a picture of it, print it, leave it by your computer. Um, it just has all the little functions that I kind of went over in just one graphic. Um, so that helps you. And that's it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to... Put, um, leave a comment below, and I will be sure and answer that as soon as I can. Have a good day.